Alright, hello YouTube. Uh, we were supposed to be on the riverfront for lunch together, but the weather has not been very cooperative. It rained earlier today, and it looks like they're supposed to have rain uh, forecasts uh, possibly later today, but that's what it looks like right now. Uh, yeah, Angie decided to take a nap. It's a good napping weather, actually, after a couple of good hot days. Uh, of course, yesterday's shopping trip, that was somewhat big. I'm just editing the video. I was got a little behind on the editing the last couple of days, if you guys want to know. And I also noticed that uh, the one Tuesday night's video went up late at 10 p.m. Uh, we found that out. So that was a video uh, would be last Tuesday night, this past Tuesday night, uh, basically. So uh, that went up at... Uh, uh, that was on the uh, the June 10th video that went up at 10 p.m. Uh, for some reason, when I just edited last night's video, I had it scheduled for uh, I had it scheduled for 7 p.m. But when I went to click, uh, for some reason, it got moved to an earlier date, uh, basically, and an earlier time. So I had to go in and fix it again real quick. So. Kind of watch and pay attention when I when I edit the videos. Uh, by the way, Angie's going to mention about we had sampled a few of those items uh, last night. The popcorn, the matzah's not too bad. The fruit snacks, uh, not too bad, and the multigrain uh, bars is pretty good. But I only had one flavor, uh, blueberry. I have not had the apple cinnamon or the strawberry yet. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be tasty too. Uh, right now I'm currently doing laundry downstairs, and uh, like I said, I'm just doing some uh, editing right now. So uh, that's what I've been doing today, and it's a beautiful day to do stuff like that. Get caught up on your editing. All right, we both got up from our wonderful naps, and she had her nap earlier. She's not playing Farm Town or Farmville, whatever it is, Farm Town. Uh, Angie, you make very good popcorn. It's very good, very, very tasty, <laughs> melty. You make very good popcorn, Angie. I know. Melt in your mouth. Oh, I like it. Hello, you two. All right. We'll just come right back here. Got good popcorn. <laughs> this is Angie's. Uh, yeah. Problem is, she didn't cut no royalties. Or profits. Bummer. Alright, I don't know if I told you guys uh, this or not. This is the main part of the video right now. Is uh, I was supposed to tell this. Uh, I want to tell this story anyway. I, I said I was going to tell this story. Uh, involving the police scanners and fire scanners and that. And, you know, in the 80s, these are relatively uh, nice devices to have. To find out what's going on. And you guys are here raw. Uh... That's how we get our raw news, uh, basically, what's actually what's going on and that. Uh, we had one uh, was given to us uh, a few years ago until it quit running, and we bought, then we went out and bought another one. Uh, we just only use it once in a while, and when I, when I had that scary video, when I took my uh, spooky walk and where there were some incidents going around town, uh, it's basically, uh, I should have listened to it, uh, uh, basically, I remember one year, uh, real quick, uh, when we used to live on the south of the town, uh, we had, that was the first year we had the scanner, and I'll tell you what, uh, if anybody in town, uh, any one of our local subscribers remembers the Cancun Riots, it's a Cancun, uh, nightclub, uh, we call it the Cancun Riots, uh, I guess a bar owner and, and security just let their patrons go a little bit go too far to produce it. A lot of uh, this was this way, a lot of fighting around town, and that that led to a closer to uh, uh, to that. Eventually, that bar ended up closing about within a month later after that incident. Maybe a couple months later after that incident, but then it kind of tightened up uh, situations with nightclubs uh, here. But that's not the story I was going to talk about. This is the one that's going to involve 
<coughs> remember when I said when we had the apartment fire, uh, we had people in the overnight video, we had people down there uh, watching the fire from a distance. Uh, basically, it's just people coming home, uh, going to the address of the scene, and just uh, want to be looky loos. Just find out what's going on. Just, just can't stay home and listen to it. It's just, just they gotta go see it for themselves. I'm not like the one of those people. If I come up to a scene, it's gonna be by coincidence, only by coincidence, and that because a lot of them has what they call handheld scanners, so that's how they get to the address quicker. Ours is too big to be portable, uh, basically. So we just sit at home and listen to it. All right, here's the story. What happened in DeWitt Fairgrounds uh, back in the mid-80s when the fire department and the police department just had a little bit too much of people coming to the scene of a, let's say, an accident or especially a fire. You know, it's one of those places when you work the first job and there's always talk, 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 and always listening and, and find out. Uh, there was one story involving the police scanner. Uh, I guess the DeWitt Fire Department uh, basically was just getting a little upset that people is coming to the scene, uh, just not being there, not supposed to be there and just kind of blocking the way so emergency vehicles can come uh, to a scene. So uh, they, I don't know how true it is, this is the most consistent story I was hearing at the time. I had not heard this story since the early 90s. So I don't know how it got, I don't know if they had any more twists or sugar coating, but this is basically what I remember what uh, they've done. Uh, I guess at uh, one time, uh, they concocted an idea uh, to help raise money for the fire department, uh, basically. I don't know if it was an idea, for the, but this is what happened was they decided to have a fire training session, uh, basically. And they decided to report it on the scanner as an actual fire, but I guess they arranged the other units around the area saying, Whatever DeWitt's calling, uh, basically, they just told him on a secret, uh, hush, hush, something like that. This is what I was told, what the story was told at the time, uh, at where I, where I worked my first job at. And, uh, basically, what happened was, uh, they arranged a fire training session and they treated it as an actual fire. So they can call over the police scanner, over the scanners. Uh, basically, so what happened was, this is at the fairgrounds, into it, it's a uh, big area where it have the, the farm buildings, the, uh, the the horse arenas, the main grandstands, whatever. It's, a, it's a, actually it's a small town fairgrounds, small county fairgrounds, basically. It's not really huge, but it's since then, uh, basically. So what happened was they had a fire training session, they had the fire departments come in, they had one extra or two extra units willing to help out in this situation, uh, basically, uh, I think was, I don't know, Grand, they put Grand, they decided to have Grand Mound and Wilton and Lowmore on standby, uh, basically, but it was mostly going to be DeWitt's uh, uh, call, uh, basically. So, uh, what happened was, they had this fire, everybody had to come and take a look. So that's what they were hoping for. See how many people that came and take a look. And what happened was, after enough people came in and take a, wanted to take a look, they all closed the fairground gates. They all closed down the fairground gates. The firemen continued their little training session. When they finished their training session and people wanted to leave, they were met by the local police at all the exits. Uh, there was only... Uh, there was only three exits that was available uh, to get in and out, uh, basically. So they had the police right there. They had to either face a, uh, a citation or they donate to the fire department, which it was a pretty big donation at the time. This was like a, uh, uh, I forgot what was the size of the donation. Dollar amounts, I heard change. I heard the dollar amounts kind of went iffy on this one. I heard it was like a $25 uh, donation to the fire department if they want to leave the fairgrounds or they face a kind of a little higher citation. I forgot what the citation cost was uh, basically but uh, after they did that little stunt uh, back in the mid 80's that kind of uh, killed the people 
let's not go follow the fire department. Let's not go follow the police department, see what they're doing. Let's just stay home and listen to it instead. And that's what they're designed for. Just stay home and listen to it. There's no need to go there and see what happened. And that, because you, all you're doing is you're potentially interfering with other people's stuff. That's basically it. Uh, what they're doing. So uh, when I come up to the scene, that's pure coincidence. Now, like I said, that was coincidence because I didn't hear it on the police scanner because I didn't have it on the other night. I just went out for my walk, thought everything's okay. Uh, actually, I found out it wasn't, and it was. Uh, I, I I put myself in a dangerous position too. So next time I go on a nightly walk or plan on a nightly walk, I think for me it's the best idea to sit at home, turn on my little scanner, find out what's going on. And if I don't hear anything, anything for 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes, then I'll decide, okay, let's, let's do a crap shoot. Let's go off on my late night walk. Uh, basically, that's, that's it. But if we're in summertime, a lot of crazy stuff happens, uh, basically. So, uh, yeah, true or not true with the DeWitt Fairground fundraising for the fire department because they were looking to buy new equipment at the time, so they thought that was a good idea. Uh... Only people that uh, could comment on it if they're uh, from the DeWitt area, maybe heard the same story, or heard similar stories in your neighborhood. Put it down in the comments down below. And that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, be aware that uh, in some states, just even to have a, a handheld portable police and fire scanner, Regardless, you're trying to use it to contact, you know, to see what the weather situation is or whatever. Uh, some states do ban them, uh, basically. So be aware of it. If they're being sold in the state, assume it's legal. But if it's not being sold in the state, uh, consider it illegal to have. All right. So just be aware of that situation too. So, uh, but it's always best to stay home, listen to it. Uh, it'd be safer that way. And we have not really listened to ours in a long time. That's why you've heard me in past videos, uh, in recent videos, turn down the scanner, turn down the scanner, because they do give addresses out on those scanners. And on YouTube, that's considered what they call doxing, uh, basically. So it's, we don't want to give out an address in a situation because some, someone will say, oh, let's go there and harass those people because it says on the Angie and Chuck show or any other YouTuber that's out there. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's why we're kind of careful what we try to do when we film, but it's not easy, guys, okay? Just remember, it's not easy. All right? Ooh, we just had a couple of mallard ducks fly by. Wow. A pair of mallard ducks just flew out of the woods over there. How I missed it, I don't know. Right now, we're going to wrap up this video. Please like, share, subscribe, don't forget that subscribe button, notification bell. Uh, tomorrow... Planet Coaster, yes, most requested, that's our June installment uh, of Planet Coaster, I gotta get it made, because June is almost over already, we'll see you guys tomorrow on Planet Coaster Lakeside Park.